Good morning and welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben, a brief five-minute devotional where we dig into the verse of the day on the YouVersion Bible app. There's a ton of Bible apps out there, um, and YouVersion is one of the biggest ones, so it's it it's one of the ones that I have encouraged people to use. Um, you can use a number of different translations on there. There are Bible study plans that you can follow. Let's say you have a goal of reading the Bible in a year. There are devotional plans where you can read through that. So if you pull up the app um, on your phone or your tablet, at the bottom in the middle, it says plan with a little check mark. Uh, you, you tap on that and you can search through thousands, thousands of plans. Some of them are three-day plans, seven-day plans, one-month plans, uh, but there are a full year-long plan. You can do it with people. Uh, there's little comment sections where you can comment back and forth. We've done these before as a church, but I encourage you to to look through this resource of the YouVersion Bible app um, and consider how you could use it in other ways. There's there's a um, a, where, a place where you can uh, list prayer requests, and then other people can go and 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 pray over those things and comment. Um, it's it's a really neat format that we really haven't explored a great deal at St. Paul's. Um, but you know, I have a profile on there. A number of people at St. Paul's have it on have a profile. Maybe some of your friends have this app and you don't even know about it. Um, but I encourage you to look into it and see how it could benefit you in other ways as well. Um, it's the first app I touch on my phone to start the day. So let's make our beginning then. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Good morning, Leroy. Good morning, John and Jan. Good morning, Terry and Diana. I'm glad you guys are joining us today. Let's dig into our verse of the day. Our verse of the day is from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. The prophet Micah. So the text is, He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The prophet Micah is giving this to the people of God. And he gives them a number of different things. But the, fir the first thing he's doing, to give a little bit of the context of what's happening, the prophet is calling the people back to their origin, back to the original and sincere good devotion that they had in their relationship with God. Now, he completely embraces this in three parts. Do justice, love Mercy, love, kindness, walk humbly with God. Now, up to this point, the prophet has been um, giving them a hard time, giving the people of God a hard time for their wicked morals. But you can't just beat someone over with negative stuff all the time. Otherwise, they just sit there in their remorse and But the other side is they need to know what behavior they should be doing. So here he's turning the people. He, he's redirecting them. So don't do that, but let me show you, let me tell you what you should be doing. This is a very common way of teaching in the ancient Near Eastern world. Here he is turning them to the true worship of God, true worship of God to true good behavior which God requires of his followers. So the first one is to do justice. Now, this means a number of things. And in this context and throughout Scripture, to do justice has a ton packed into it. Don't harm anyone. Uh, render each person to each person what belongs to them. 
don't bother one another. And, and, and maybe not bother in the sense of asking questions or befriending, but don't make someone's life uncomfortable. Now, one of the things that I've been working with and talking with my kids, especially when they're playing at the playground or something like that, is let's work for other people's joy. Because when other people are happy, they want to play with you. And then you're enjoying your time as well. Now, the other side of this is kind of helpful to see as well. Not just uh, don't take things or that don't belong to you and don't harm people, but on the other side of this, help others. Promote their welfare. Prevent them from being hurt. Prevent violence coming against them. So this, this is kind of a both and, and we see this in the commandments. It's not just don't steal, but protect your neighbor's stuff. Uh, so that they can be protected in all of their things, but that you, you end up in the process helping the innocent be protected and the guilty, their appropriate punishment. So this is this is very common in the prophets. This is what is said in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 5. If you execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, so what this means is if you restrain the wicked and protect the good, now you're actually looking at what justice is. It's, it's, it's two-sided. But then we also have, to move on in this text, we have love mercy. So God requires uh, no works from us for himself because of Jesus Christ. He wants us, he wants everything uh, to yield to the use of welfare of our neighbor. And Matthew chapter 9 verse 13 comes to mind, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. This is this text of mercy. We have mercy and grace, and they're opposite sides of the same coin. Uh, mercy is not receiving the punishment that I deserve, and grace is receiving what I haven't earned. So they're they're very very similar. Um, and so when when you hear God say love mercy, love you got to be able to identify it when it's God giving you mercy and then you know what it looks like when you're when you're doing it to someone else to relent in in mercy. So it's interesting that you have justice and mercy together and then finally walking humbly with your God is is this beautiful way of speaking about good behavior in relationship to our neighbor in relationship with God. If you're walking humbly with God, you're, you're in good standing with your neighbor. So all of this really comes down nicely together as a beautiful package. Um, and God has shown you that all of this is, is good. Even in the Old Testament, your relationship to your neighbor matters. This isn't just a New Testament gospel thing with Jesus. This is a beautiful example. Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly. That's a a beautiful six-word anthem for our day. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, when we think of justice and mercy and humility in the world, we use the world's definitions of these words. Help us to see them in the way that you have dealt with us so that we would reflect that way of living in the world, with our neighbor, and in our loving devotion to you. We pray this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. What we do with our body matters, how we use it. This is a great example. Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly. Have a blessed day in Christ.